Hey Guru Nation, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share. Really means a lot to me. Look, I got asked a really good question today by somebody who emailed me. Dan at TheClinicalTrailsGuru.com, anybody can do it. They said, hey, I'm a research nurse. I work for a company. We own a lot of sites all over the place. And have you ever seen a nurse become a site director? And the answer is, of course. And then the follow-up question was, what is involved in day-to-day -day of directing, owning, managing, not necessarily owning, but directing or managing a site? As someone who's done this basically my entire career, since 2005 till present, albeit for smaller sites, uh, I think I could give a couple answers for this. So the first, the first thing you do is you encourage motivate retain staff that's the most important thing at least in my opinion because without that you can't really accomplish much beyond what you're able to do yourself so if you don't train if you don't hire the right staff meaning people that are coachable and then train them in ways that you want to see the clinic being managed and then empower them so don't micromanage, give them the tools they need to succeed. This is why I like E-Reg, this is why I like Viva. This is why I think a lot of side owners, I think a lot of side owners go wrong here where where they, they don't do enough to empower their coordinators or their staff and then they end up doing the work themselves. And look, that could only take you so far. Like I've done it before. If you want to scale your site, and it sounds like you have a big organization to manage, you need to take care of your employees, retaining them, empowering them, and then motivating them. Now, I don't know how much freedom you have, financial incentives, always great, but what I've actually learned in about 18 years of doing this, financial incentive, while it's great, it's not actually the main reason why people work hard for you. It's you being their mentor and understanding where they need to get, where they want to get in their career, and seeing you and your organization as the vehicle to take them, if not to their final destination, at least to the next step. And you have to make that really clear with your staff, and they have to believe it. You can't just say it, and then your actions don't dictate what your mouth just said. So, I don't know how to break that down and articulate it into finer points, but maybe something along the lines of, hey, what do you want to do in your career? I don't even care if you are trying to move on. Let me know. Let, I will tell you, in my opinion, what's a reasonable time frame for you to do that, and then I will go out of my way to help you do that in your time period or less. It's also my job to convince you not to want to go somewhere else. I'm going to look for ways to have you achieve your goal here if it's possible. Now, if it's if you're running a site and somebody says, hey, I want to be a CRA, you're going to have a hard time actually making that happen unless your site grows really big. I've seen this happen too to the point where you guys also become a CRO in some respect and you develop CRO capabilities. And then you can. Oh, all of a sudden, hey, now we actually can. Um, allow you to be a CRA at our own company and you never know how big your site's going to get or what the opportunities are going to bring you but I do know you're going to lose money if you cons consistently lose employees because you're going to have to stop hire someone new start the training process again in a busy year like 2023 moving on the industry really is not showing any signs of slowing down you don't want to take two steps forward and five steps back. So I see a lot of sites get greedy on not just payment, but on how they're helping their employees achieve their goals and help helping their employees achieve their career outcomes and tie, and not tying it into the company objective. So I think it's our responsibility as site directors to take care of our coordinators and our staff first. So our coordinators are the most direct and the most obvious employees, but your employees may also be 
your PIs, your sub eyes, your patient recruiters, all that stuff. So training and retention is day to day. Solving problems is another day to day thing. I like to tell my staff they're they're pretty much all up to speed now, except the latest hire, which I'm still going in more often than I should to train her. But the first two that have been there now seven months, I tell them, look, I'm not here. When I'm here, I'm not here to do the day-to-day -day stuff. I'm here to grow the business. I'm here to help solve problems. When we get to problems that you may not have been taught how to solve. So lately it's been dealing with monitor requests for certain things. I'm really teaching my coordinators to not accept the easy answer that, hey, we made a deviation when you know you didn't make a deviation. So push back a little against CR CRAs. Um, those are the kind of things that I'm training. I'm also getting involved in patient recruitment. What are we doing right now? Pre-screening wise, marketing wise, social media, digital, print. What are we doing in the community outreach? What are we doing as far as letting the other providers in the community know about our studies? What are we doing letting other patients that are already in our studies know about our study opportunities? What are we doing? So I'm involved in that regard. And as a site director, you cannot lose sight of patient recruitment. Because the minute you get comfortable is the minute you start declining in your numbers. And this, this is how I've seen it since I've started. You might get a huge surge in enrollment, and then you might take a break and say, hey, we're good on enrollment. Don't do it too long because it's hard to get that momentum going again. The word of mouth, especially from patients, really important. Another thing as a site director, quality control. So I'm training, my staff are too new to be able to do QC properly. They're barely just figured out how to be coordinators. It's still my role until they mature, and I train them, by the way, it's my responsibility. It's still my job to do quality control. So if there's a major deviation, if there are minor deviations, if there are things in the operations that I'm not liking or that sponsors or CROs or CRAs are not liking, that's my role as quality control. Maybe at your organization, you're at a big enough site to where you have QC people, but then who's in charge? Who's QCing the QC people? It's still you. So no matter how many layers you separate yourself from the actual work, at some point as the site director, you got to get in there and do some work too. Not necessarily day to day, but QC, that's part of the overall big picture. Another thing is biz dev, business development. So what are you doing as far as community outreach is concerned? We've discussed for patient recruitment. What are you doing as far as networking with other providers, other clinicians in your community? Take it a step further. What are we doing as far as getting new studies, bringing in new studies for our site, filling up our study pipeline? My company, DSCS, we have a service, 1500 bucks a month. We help sites get studies. What are you doing? Are you on clinicaltrials.gov? Are you on LinkedIn? Are you networking with the right people, with other site owners, to try to bring appropriate studies, medical science liaisons at, at your site, pharmaceutical sales reps at your site? Are you doing these things? If not, who's doing them? Again, I don't know how much resources you have. Maybe you have people doing biz dev and meeting with sales reps and meeting with medical science liaisons and going on clinicaltrials.gov and using LinkedIn. But who's checking that they're doing their job then? So it's either you're doing it or you're making sure someone's doing it. That basically summarizes this entire video of what a site director does. Studies, patients, employees, you can throw in finances there. Not every site director is in charge of that. I know for sure I am. So who's invoicing? Invoicing everything, invoicing unscheduled visits, in invoicing reconsents, invoicing screen failures, invoicing vendors. Who's doing the invoicing? Who's paying attention to accounts receivables? Who's doing QC? All those things are kind of day to day of what a site director does. And that's basically what I do on a daily basis. All of those things I just mentioned. And I also put a lot of the marketing responsibilities on my shoulders right now as well. So let me know what you guys think. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Let me know if you're a site director out there. 
if I missed anything. Um, I think I covered it all, but for sure I missed something. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Take care of your nation. Bye-bye.